How is it going everybody? You're watching then about tech and today I'm gonna tell you which Mac you should get based on what you do, based on your profession. Regardless if you are a student or a really pro user, in this video I got you covered if you're looking for a Mac and you don't really know which one you wanna get because it can get so confusing with so many models, so many types of processors like M1, M2, M3, M4. Of course, we have the Pro, the Ultra, the Max. It can get extremely complicated, but in this video, I'm gonna make it easy. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's begin. Okay guys, so I decided to organize this whole topic in three different categories and you can find them all here with the chapter. So it's super easy to navigate. So category number one, I'm calling it light users. So if you are a student, like a high school student or a graduate student, any kind of student, or if you are an office worker, or if you work in any profession that what you do is really web-based. So what you do is browsing the web, reading your emails, documents, using a lot of browser like Safari, Google Chrome, and so on. And of course, video calls. And if you have some software that you use on your day-to-day -day life, but that's mainly web-based. So pretty much what you do is on a browser, you are on category number one, you are a light user. My recommendation to you is a MacBook Air M2 with eight to 16 gigabytes. If you can, get the M2 with 16 or newer, as I mentioned. Of course, if you are tight on a budget and you can only get it with eight gigabytes, it will do the trick. But of course, try and get the 16 gigabyte. And of course, if you can, you can go for a MacBook Air M3 or the new M4, which is the newest, the most up to date. But the M2, eight to 16 gigabytes will do the trick to you. Now, a lot of people are gonna ask about the M1. So the first generation, the first Apple Silicon. And if you ask me, I don't really recommend it anymore. It was released five years ago, it's pretty old. It won't really be future-proof, but it, that's the only Mac you can get. Uh, it's a great way to start to enter the Mac world, but again, I don't really recommend it that much. So if you can, get the M2 or newer. And I know a lot of you guys are gonna say, okay, Daniel, and what about other Macs? You're just gonna recommend the MacBook Air? Uh, we have to talk about the Mac Mini, the Mac Studio, the iMac, the Mac Pro. And honestly, guys, in this video, I'm gonna focus on MacBooks, simply because they're more versatile, you can take them anywhere, and all the others are desktops, so they're fixed in place. So if you have them on the office, you can't take them home. I mean, you can, but it's such a hassle. You can't travel with them. You can't take them with you. So I'm gonna focus on MacBooks. MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros. But of course, if you're interested in an iMac, Mac Mini, Mac Studio, you can get the specs, the specifications that I'm giving you in this video. And of course, go ahead and configure and set up your desktop option. But again, I'm gonna focus on MacBooks. Also, talking about storage. Storage is really personal. A lot of people don't need storage at all. They only use cloud services and they only use the cloud for everything. So 120 gigabytes is enough. For others that need like offline storage to store documents, to store files, you will need more storage. So this will really depend on your use. So maybe you will need 256, 512 or even terabyte or more. Okay, so I'm gonna leave storage to you. So go ahead and think of your workflow and then you can realize how much storage you actually need. Moving on, let's talk about category number two, which I'm gonna call Light Pro. You're not a super light user, but you're not a heavy duty user, so you are a Light Pro. So of course I'm talking about social media managers, creators, office workers that actually need a ton of productivity or other professions that will require you to use third-party software or really intense productivity. Like for example, if you have to manage a ton of documents or if you use dozens of tabs open in Google Chrome and you know how Google Chrome is uh, like dealing and actually sucking all your RAM memory and processor. We've all been there. If you need light editing, so it's not super heavy duty, but it's not super light. You actually need more, all right? I'm calling you category number two, light 
Pro. For you, my recommendation is a MacBook Air. Yes, still the Air, but the latest and greatest. So the MacBook Air M4, this time M4, with 16 gigabytes of storage. That is one first very excellent option in very good relation, like cost benefit. It's a really budget option and it's gonna deliver you so much performance. It's amazing, all right? You're gonna love this computer. If you wanna go pro, now let's talk about MacBook Pro. You have pretty much two options. So you have a MacBook Pro M3 Pro, which is this guy right here, all right? This is a great option as well. Or if you wanna get the latest processor, you can get a MacBook Pro M4 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Please keep in mind that this guy, the M3 Pro, all right, which is an upgrade, it's not the normal M3, it's the M3 Pro, it has 18 gigabytes of RAM, whereas the normal M4, which is another option that I gave you, only has 16 gigabytes. So we have pros and cons right there. And you have to really think about this one because the pros are gonna be more expensive than the MacBook Air, but they will deliver you more. They will deliver you more processing power, all right? More GPU power. They will deliver you a better screen. They will deliver you more ports. So if you need to plug in, for example, um, SD cards, HDMI, more USB-C ports. So a MacBook Pro is great because it has a ton of ports. It has better speakers, better microphones. So it is more pro focused. So it is a great alternative, but of course is more expensive. So if you are on a budget and you need to get more for your money, the MacBook Air M4 is a great option. If you can spend a little bit more, go for the pros, those two options that I gave you. And now of course we have to talk about the last category, category number three, which is actually the trickiest one because this is the real pros, okay? We're talking about professions that really need a flagship machine. So we're talking about developers, heavy editing, heavy editing, like video, audio, image, like designers, architects, or really any profession that will require really heavy duty third-party software. So they really have to have processing power, a lot of horsepower on their machines. And I say this is tricky because if you are a pro user, you generally kinda already know what you need. And of course, this is very a lot on what you actually do because some people need more CPU, so more processing power. Some people need more GPU, so graphic processing. Other people need a ton of storage. And of course, others may need a ton of RAM memory, like 64, 128 gigabytes of RAM. I'm not talking about storage. So of course, this will vary so, so much on what you do specifically. So I can't really tell you, go with this device because you will know which one you probably need. And of course, that's why I always recommend the MacBook Pro for those users. Uh, it's called the Pro for this reason. Number one, a MacBook Pro is the best machine for heat dissipation. So if you use a MacBook Air for heavy, heavy duty usage, it will just overheat and then it will throttle the performance. So then the processor will go down, the, the, your Mac will start to get slow because it, it'll, tr it'll try and stop overheating. If you're using a MacBook Pro, on the other hand, it has heat dissipation, it has fans, so this won't happen so easily. It may happen, but it's not so easy. On top of that, you have all of the benefits of the MacBook Pro, as I mentioned, like a great display, which depending on what you do, you need that, great speaker, microphone, a ton of ports, which is generally extremely important for Pro users as well. And of course, last but not least, the MacBook Pro will allow you to actually configure it and customize it exactly the way you want. It's gonna give you way more possibilities to customize your Mac compared to the MacBook Air, which is way more restrict to a more light use, okay? So that's my recommendation, of course, go with the Pro. And on top of that, always get the latest chip. So always get the M4, 
which is the latest right now, depending on what you're, when you're watching this video, it could be M5, M6, but always get the latest chip. If you are investing on a heavy duty machine, don't get the previous generation, always get the latest. You're gonna get the best features, uh, it's gonna be future-proof, way better. Of course, it's gonna be up, you're gonna get updates for many more years, so if you're spending more money, just get the latest. And don't get the entry-level M4. If you are a pro user, get at least the M4 Pro or the M4 Max, and of course, customize storage and RAM accordingly to what you need, all right? But that's pretty much what I have to tell you in this video. I try to make this as straightforward as possible. I know it's a very difficult subject because it's so subjective, really. It's so difficult to uh, pinpoint exactly what Mac is best for which person. So that's why we decided to create those three different categories and try uh, to aim for the biggest audience possible and try to at least give you and point you to the right direction when deciding which Mac, which MacBook specifically you should get, all right? So that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next videos with your guys. Bye-bye.